For this project, I'm going to be building a day bed I can put in my office. To start with, I'm going to disassemble these two bed frames so I can reuse the wood for my new day bed. Both of these bed frames are capable of supporting a twin XL mattress, so when you put the two bed frames side by side, they're capable of making a standard size king. I have two sets of these bed frames that I use as guest beds, and while they work great, they do take up a fair amount of floor space, and since they're not in use most of the year, they're taking up a lot of floor space for no reason. So I decided I would repurpose the wood from these bed frames to use to build the new day beds. I would build one day bed for my office downstairs and one to go upstairs. I will also be using wood that had been used to build some 2x4 shelving, but I didn't need it anymore so I took it apart, but it's been sitting around the house and I haven't had a good use for it until now. I started this project by designing it in SketchUp. My primary goal, of course, was to end the project with a usable day bed, but the secondary goal was just as important, and that was to ensure that I made the most efficient use of the wood I had on hand. I did not want to have to go to the store and buy any new wood for this project. My secondary goal was honestly more important to me than actually building the day bed itself, to the point that I ended up redesigning the bed about five times in SketchUp. I really wanted to make the most efficient use I could of the 2x4s I had on hand so I wanted to minimize the amount of cutting, drilling, and sanding I had to do. I feel like I achieved my goal overall, since I easily reduced the amount of pocket holes I had to drill by about 50%. While I did achieve efficiency with the use of my materials, it did not translate to efficient use of time. Ultimately, any time saved not having to be outside cutting and drilling was still spent on the design process. I decided to assemble the daybed in the office, so I wouldn't have to carry it in there later on. There are basically two main components that make up the daybed. I'll call them the base and the rollout. I chose to start by assembling pieces for the rollout first. First, I need to assemble the frame pieces that support the mattress when it's tucked underneath the base. Next, I need to assemble the face of a rollout. This part will attach to the frame piece that I just assembled via all the pocket holes that were drilled along the edge of one of the 2x4s. With the rollout portion's face and bed frame support now assembled, I'm gonna move on and assemble the end pieces for the base itself. The vertical portions for the end pieces of the base have pocket holes drilled into them, and that's because, again, I'm repurposing wood from previous projects, and these happen to be the proper length, so I'm just gonna make do with them having pocket holes that aren't gonna be used. I only wanted the four vertical 2x4s that make up the end pieces of the base to touch the ground, so I raised the bottom horizontal 2x4 off the ground by a quarter inch. With the end pieces assembled, I now need to attach them. There will be a total of three 2x4s that connect them. Two will go across the top, one at the front and one at the back, and one across the bottom. I'm going to start with the top ones. Now bear in mind, as I attach them in the video, what you're seeing is that the entire end piece has been flipped over, so the top is on the ground. This will allow me to more easily assemble it, because I need the top 2x4s to actually be a 2x4's width below the top of the end pieces. For the 2x4 that connects the end pieces along the bottom back part of the frame, I need that board to be a quarter inch off of the floor like the previous 2x4s were on the end pieces themselves. To facilitate this, I use some floor spacers to be able to raise it up a quarter inch. Now these spacers are used for installing flooring and I have found them to be very useful for various projects at times when you need to raise something just a little bit and support it in multiple places. Now that the main part of the frame for the base has been assembled, I'm going to go back to the very first thing that I built, which was the frame for the rollout portion of the bed. I have flipped it over and set it on top of the base so it's easier to work on, and what I'm doing right now is I need to drill holes in it so that I can attach the wheels that will allow the rollout to roll out from underneath the base. But I don't want to go too deep, so I've marked my drill bit with some tape so I don't go past the tape line and drill completely through the 2x4. These wheels used to be on the tool cart 
parts in my garage, but I ended up getting tired not being able to move around easily in tight spaces, so I swapped them for swivel wheels. And then these have just been sitting on the shelf ever since, so now I finally get to use them up and get them out of the garage. With the wheels now attached, I can now attach the bed frame part to the face frame part so that I can now basically assemble the rollout frame itself. I'm going to back up for a minute now. When I initially assembled the rollout section of the frame, I only had four wheels attached, two on each end. But once I had it assembled and flipped it over, I realized that it really needed a bit more support in the middle part of the frame. So I wanted to attach four more wheels to even it out. Unfortunately, I only had six wheels on hand. So I went to the store to buy two more and couldn't find any that matched. So I decided I was just going to have to live with attaching two more with a total of six wheels. I also went back and used some metal brackets to reinforce the long 2x4s that connect the two ends of the base. I mentioned earlier that the pocket holes on the vertical 2x4s of the end pieces would not be used. The only reason they were there is because I was reusing old material. Unfortunately, the pocket holes that the screws went into on the long 2x4s that connect the two end pieces went into the pocket holes of those vertical 2x4s. I didn't take that into account when I was planning everything out. So those screws were not particularly strong. They didn't seat very well. So I wanted to reinforce those areas with the metal brackets. All right, I'm now ready to move on and attach the 2x4 slats that will support the mattress. Laying these pieces out was honestly the hardest part of the entire project and probably took the most amount of time and was really frustrating, honestly. The main problem I encountered that was causing all the headaches is all the darker stained 2x4s have to attach to the top portion of the rollout section of the frame. Unfortunately, that particular board they need to attach to was slightly warped. What I found was that that warping was going to cause some of the 2x4s, if they were attached, to be more than a quarter of an inch off of center along the back end of the 2x4. That meant they were going to hit or interfere with the 2x4s next to them, which was going to then cause issues with the opening and closing of the day bed. Ultimately to resolve the problem what I ended up having to do was remove two of the slats, one from the base and one from the rollout section. This then freed up seven inches of space which allowed me to increase the gaps between some of the slats to accommodate for the warped boards. But I had to go back and redo all the math to ensure that the spaces were essentially equal across all the slats and you weren't going to have one particular area of the bed where you had a particularly large gap where the mattress could end up being uh, capable of being kind of pushed through the slats because it didn't have enough support. After attaching the slats to the rollout portion of the bed, I need to attach the slats to the base portion. Now these boards could have been screwed and fixed in place, but I wanted them to be removable. And really this kind of stems from the fact that I grew up as a military brat and then joined the military myself. So I've done a lot of moving in my life and I really like furniture that is easy to move and come apart. One thing I do regret doing is out of laziness, I decided to drill all these boards by hand in the room when I did the assembly. I considered drilling them using my drill press, but that day it was cold outside and I didn't want to get it out of the garage and set it up. So that was a mistake. It would have been a lot better had I used the drill press because then all these holes would have been perfectly straight. Now, if you're wondering why I'm using bolts to secure the slats in place instead of using wooden dowels, which would be a lot cheaper, it's because I want all of it to match. And for the rollout slats, they are connected with screws on one end. So the other end needs to have, in my opinion, a bolt that just drops into place because then I can just grab the top of it with my fingers and pull it out. If I put a dowel in there, it'd be very difficult to remove and you'd have to basically kind of leverage the other end of the frame to get that two by four off of the dowel. And with like 11 slats across the entire thing, that would become very difficult to do. So originally my design for the day bed was what I've built so far, which is the base section and then the rollout portion. Then I decided I wanted to build a headboard, but I was gonna do that separately and probably attach it to the wall using a French cleat. 
And then I changed my mind again and said I wanted the daybed to have armrests on it so that since it's going to be a couch probably 99% of the time it would have armrests for when you're using it as a couch. And then after some trial and error with some designs I realized that I didn't have a good way to design the armrests that were going to be strong enough to support someone leaning against them. So I figured the best way to just kind of solve all of my problems at once was to incorporate the armrests and the headboard into the base. And that would ensure everything was nice and strong. And then I didn't have to worry about building a whole separate headboard and cutting a French cleat, which is honestly a kind of pain in the ass. All that means is I kind of have to undo half of what I've done so far here on the base part and rebuild it to be able to incorporate the armrests and the headboard. Before I get to the headboard and the armrest, I'm gonna attach one more two x four to support the slats in the middle. This may not be necessary, but after kind of putting my weight on it when it was fully assembled, I just felt it needed a little more support. To incorporate the armrests and the headboard, I need to replace the back vertical 2x4 of both end pieces. With all the boards now reattached to the new vertical support, I'm going to attach the rest of the vertical supports that are going to be used for the armrest. Now I'm going to attach the top of the armrest to all four of those boards. A downside I find to using pocket holes is that they can provide a little bit of flex in your overall structure. So to help counteract some of that flex in the armrest, I flipped one of the boards around so that the middle board was going the opposite direction of the two other boards, hopefully providing a little more stiffness to the armrest. With the armrest assembled, now I just need to attach the remaining boards for the headboard portion. I'm going to start with the very top board since it's flush with the top of the new vertical supports. Next I'm going to attach all the vertical supports that go across the back. Now I still have one more horizontal board that needs to be attached and of course it will attach to the bottom portion of these vertical supports. But if I do that one first then I risk possibly misaligning it and shifting it up you know just a little bit and then the verticals wouldn't fit in between and that would be an issue. So this way. I don't have that problem. All I have to do is put it right up against the bottom part and then connect them.